All right, welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live on this Monday morning. Well, as life gets back to normal, we are slowly coming perhaps out of some of our pandemic workout routines. But Brian Sazi, you're looking at some data that suggests the gym business not really coming all the way back after some initial excitement when we saw reopenings last year. Yeah, this was a story we initially uh, that we had on the Yahoo.com homepage with the headline, uh, gym attendance is not looking too small right now. Uh, and it really isn't, looking at some of the data that I stumbled upon here. Uh, first out of Bank America, uh, Merrill Lynch, aggregate spending on gym memberships is now running at 67% of the level seen in February 2020. And you can see in that chart there, uh, in recent weeks, that gym spending on gym membership has really has leveled out. So we had that initial burst uh, as the COVID restrictions lifted and it appeared to have been, it has leveled out, I, I would suppose, because perhaps of, of fears about oh, people are going back to work, of course, but also fears about the new COVID uh, Delta variant too as well. Also, some other data uh, I stumbled across uh, out of Goldman Sachs, buried at the bottom of a really long note looking at what is working during economic recovery or the open, reopening of the U.S. economy. They're noting that gym attendance uh, is in fact down. Uh, so gym attendance for the week, June 14th to June 20th, that's the last time Goldman measured this data, attendance fell 8%. And I went back and looked at what attendance was doing in the four weeks prior. Uh, it was it was declining slightly or up slightly. Uh, and, and the weeks before that, gym attendance was coming on pretty strong. And so you can see that consumers, for whatever reason, are might be taking a pause uh, in visiting the gym again, probably maybe returning to their home-based uh, Peloton uh, bikes or, or treadmills that they were using throughout the pandemic. And it's starting to show up in, in some of the stock prices, uh, guys. You know, Planet Fitness Shares is the main primary publicly traded fitness center here in the U.S. Its stock is down about 14 percent in the past three months, according to Yahoo Finance Plus data. Of course, the S&P 500 is up about 7 percent during that span. Peloton shares, despite all the concern about the about their treadmills and the safety of the treadmills and any potential uh, lawsuits stemming from uh, anything regarding safety there, its stock is only down 3% uh, in the past three months. So I did find it interesting to see that divergence. And it also comes against the backdrop of a lot of fitness chains now starting to offer greater discounts to get people back in the gym. I look at New York Sports Club, they are now offering five days free. Uh, you come in there, sign up, you get five days free. Planet Fitness, a dollar down, and you pay $10 a month. And Retro Fitness, uh, a chain, a couple hundred locations, one couple bunch of them by me in Long Island, offering 15 cents down uh, to join. So it's just uh, interesting stuff out there, perhaps a, a pause in the gym reopening trade, guys. And and one more example of that, Brian, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned, was Equinox that was going to go public through a SPAC deal and mm -hmm. reportedly now talks have been called out off. So that's just another sign. But I, what I'm curious about as well is, the gym versus classes equation. In other words, some of the companies that just run class, sort of specific classes, specialized classes, I wonder if they're holding up better than the gyms where you just go on your own to work out, if there's an idea that people realize they were craving community, whether that was something they could get online through the likes of a Peloton or in a class. And I wonder if that's recovering better than the sort of individualized workout. I, I don't know if there's data on that. I would tend to doubt it, but that will be an interesting thing as well to see if the sort of paradigm for how people want to work out right now has shifted a little bit more. Yeah, it's hard for it has been hard yeah. for me to tell. You know, I might I joined a new gym by me, and on the weekends, usually when the gyms are some of the most crowded, they've been empty uh, during the peak hours. Of course, that's when I tend to go peak hours gym. Why, why not here? Uh, but the classes are are pretty much empty, and it's been uh, it's been not what I thought it would have been. Hmm. Yeah, and and I think ultimately, like I'm just thinking as we're talking here about you know what our show is, right? We talk about markets and investment opportunities and things like that, and you know the the fitness industry has always been faddish, cyclical. Things are really hot, things are not, and so what this data to me says is kind of saying is like. The pandemic may have changed some things. It may not have changed everything. And I think a, a secularly challenged business like the big box gym remains challenged after COVID. But of course, Peloton then had a bunch of growth pulled forward. So maybe it's also challenged after COVID. And it just becomes a very challenging investment case for any of these ideas. Equinox, Orange Theory, um, you know, like a whatever SLT, right? Not that they're all that big, but you, you know what I'm saying? Like any of these opportunities is just difficult for an investment case that's gonna last five or 10 years because that's just not really the shape 
that um, the fitness industry tends to take over time. And so uh, I, I think that really has always been the challenge here and, and is likely to remain so going forward. All right, uh, let's get out of here.